Welcome to Startup Health TV, where we celebrate the entrepreneurs and innovators who are transforming health. I'm Logan Plaster. I'm here with my friend, John Hatchell, from Tie-Dye. John, thanks for joining me. Happy to be here. So you started your career, or sort of what led into Tie-Dye was a career in medical device sales, right, with Stryker. And what I found so interesting about learning about you and your story is sort of what people don't know about that side of medical device sales, how intense it is and how much it brings you into the, the healthcare world. So just as a preamble into what you're building now, tell us a little bit about your work as a medical device sales rep, in, particularly in the OR. Yeah, uh, medical device sales uh, in, in the whole med tech industry as a whole is, is quite interesting. Uh, it, it, you know, I started pretty much right out of college, dropped out of you know, my application to law school to go take this job at Stryker when I was 23, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I, once you get involved into the industry, I, I think you, you hear the word sales, but you don't understand the entire service element that comes in into play uh, in supporting the product utilization. Um, so I, the majority of my career was in orthopedics and robotics, and so uh, it is very much a consultative experience in the sense of you are involved in the pre-op planning, you know, all the way through care delivery to even post-op, and 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 being a really uh, key component uh, into the to the procedure, right? And 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 you know, to to the tune of you know forty to fifty x of these a week, you know, sometimes you'd be involved. That's in. that's wild. Yeah. So, you told me I couldn't believe that you're you're in the procedure and you actually understand some of the tools being used better than the surgeon themselves because you know you've studied the tools. It's very much surgeon dependent on that, right? I mean, but yeah, yeah, yeah. certainly there's there's guys who've got thirty years experience, right? They they know they know the uh, the you know every step and you know they, but then there's there's folks that are just out of fellowship, right? Yeah. And they need they need a little bit more coaching on how to use certain certain products, right? And yeah. so. Um, you're very much tasked with the quality control element, but um, really the, the, it just gives you a really unique viewpoint of what's happening um, within the facility. Uh, and so uh, in that role, you get to interact with so many departments. Obviously you're interacting with the folks in the operating room setting, um, but you're also interacting with folks in purchasing. You're interacting with folks um, relative, relative to the instrumentation in central sterile. You're, you're interacting with folks uh, you know, in finance. You're interacting with the, with the C-suite, right? So, uh, you end up getting to to have this really immersive experience in healthcare that I don't think I really appreciated when yeah. it was happening uh, until uh, very later in my career that, wow, this is a really unique perspective that I'm able to gain because I'm able to see how departments function and, and the challenges that they have uh, in working together. That's so uh, interesting. Yeah, and so that was really kind of the catalyst and the driver uh, behind us building this business because these are real problems um, there is real complexity and real nuance behind them that has not been solved and no one's really approached it before. Uh, and so uh, we were really motivated to go and solve these really unique challenges and, and we're really excited about um, what we've put into the hands uh, of clinics and today and, and, and departments today. And, uh, we've got a really great roadmap for expanding upon that. So let's talk about those challenges. Obviously, yeah. you are, you know, you're in the OR, you're working uh, for Stryker, you're, you're <laughs> repping these products. What, what are you bumping up against that is making you realize, wow, this system is broken? So we use this analogy quite a bit, and it's, you know, or, or I shouldn't say analogy, we use this example quite a bit, right? You, you literally would be in an operating room having a robot, you know, either assist or autonomously perform a procedure on a patient, yeah. and then the basically the data uh, trans, uh, uh, that you would be exchanging back to uh, another department or to you know the vendor uh, is all done on paper, right? That's crazy. So that that that's that first that first piece, right? You're like, wow, we're we're using we're we're we're, we're utilizing a robot to provide care, but then we're utilizing a fax machine to send information, <laughs> you know, so. At, at some point, you just kind of you know look at yourself and you know a little cross-eyed and go, eh, something's not right here, right? Like there's there's we, obviously a need for innovation here. We can do better. Exactly. We can do better. Um, what was the what was sort of the business case that you discovered to realize, hey, this is more than just sort of a niche problem. This is a larger issue that we can tackle. So really started with uh, my understanding and education on blockchain technology, right? So uh, you, you know, starting to understand principles around 
why a shared ledger between two parties is so incredibly important for remittance and reconciliation, why a shared ledger can be incredibly important for, uh, for data sharing and status sharing between parties who are doing you know, a high volume of business together, uh, and then being able to apply smart contracts, which is another uh, byproduct of blockchain technology um, that could provide autonomous capabilities uh, to these organizations. And so, um, certainly, you know, transparency is, a, is a, a word that's thrown around quite a bit in healthcare today, uh, but in administrative process and business process, it is a crucial, crucial element that doesn't get nearly enough attention. Uh, and then when you, you consider what smart contracts can do um, in terms of removing a lot of that non-clinical burden that clinical people are forced to do day in and day out in their work day, it allows the clinical folks to work at the top of their job description, right, and put the focus back on the patient, which is what we all want to do. And yes. so, although people may look at our company and say, hey, you know, you're not, you're, you know, how, how are you really impacting patient care? We are, right? Yeah, like, yeah. We're, we, are, we are very much uh, ensuring uh, the quality control elements for, for better care delivery. So you describe your background, kind of how you discovered the challenge and, you know, sort of, uh, laid out what's broken, and you described the piece of the, kind of how the technology blockchain allows for a different paradigm. Now let's talk about the product itself, exactly what you've built and what you're rolling out. Yeah, so talk a little bit about you know, the, the shared ledger, utilizing smart contracts. Uh, essentially what, we do, what we've done is created a comprehensive platform that accounts for all of the key elements and key components uh, in getting to that product utilization and then what happens post product use uh, in terms of that continuum, uh, both on the transactional billing side and then getting that product back to its original origin, right, so that it's there for that next procedure that may be tomorrow yeah. or you know, in the days leading ahead. Right, I'm going to challenge you, That's a little, that was a little under the hood. Mm -hmm. So for someone who's not in uh, purchasing or in hospital administration. Yep. Can you break it down to me on another level? Okay. Grandma goes in for, for a surgical procedure. This you, is good, this is good. Right? You, you, right now, it is an absolute fire drill trying to coordinate product availability for grandma's procedure. Like, and the, like the things that the surgeon needs to do the to procedure. To do the procedure. Okay. The, the, actual, the actual medical device implants that are going to be implanted in you sometimes uh, are delivered day of. They're delivered within hours of the procedure happening. Wow. The things that the patient just takes for granted, they think Correct. arrive by magic. Correct. All the supplies, the stock, all Correct. that. Okay. Yeah. And so there's, there is this just you know, web of complexity that goes on between the facilities, their vendor partners, and the distribution, and the tracking and tracing of these products to ultimately just have it in hand and have it available for a surgical procedure. That is a stone cold fact. So that's, that's, the, that's the element that we, we, are, we are providing or the key value that we're providing to these facilities um, with a lot of other bells and whistles. You're digitizing that process, you're streamlining it, you're making it trackable, you're making it transparent, all these things. Correct. Got it, okay, so what's next? What are you most excited about for the next 12 months? Well, we're, we're here today with our corporate partner, Discover, uh, who's been, been fantastic for us and allowed us to take on that last mile, which is really on payments, right? We, right. we, we could facilitate the entire purchasing piece and the buying piece, but what we couldn't have done without them was the payments piece, right? And so. And um, that's something we've been rolling out over the last uh, you know, th three to four months and we're really excited about the journey that we're going on with them. Uh, and so I would say that's probably the next element uh, of what we're, we're looking to, to deliver to, to, to customers here in the near future. Love it. John, it's exciting to watch your development now and uh, I, we're going to be watching for the next 12 months to see how this grows and, uh, and changes. But I know you're going to do amazing work helping streamline hospitals. And there's just so many downstream effects for physicians, burnout, workforce issues, just the frustration it, among physicians that these things um, aren't at, at hand and up to date, you know? So making that hospital world a better place. That's what we're trying to do. All right, John, thanks a lot for the yeah, time. Thank you, Logan.